എന്തുകൊണ്ട് ഐ ഇ എൽ ഡി എസ് ആൻഡ് ഒ ഇ ടി കോച്ചിങ്ങിന് ഒരു ലക്ഷത്തിലധികം വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ ഒൻപത് വർഷമായി അജിനോറ തെരഞ്ഞെടുക്കുന്നു എന്നറിയണ്ടേ അത് അവരിൽ നിന്ന് തന്നെ കേട്ടാലോ അജിനോറിലെ ട്രെയിനേഴ്സ് എല്ലാവരും നല്ല ക്വാളിറ്റി ഉള്ളവരാണ് അവർ നമുക്ക് ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ കെയർ തരും അജിനോറയിൽ റെഗുലർ മോക്ക് ടെസ്റ്റ് നടത്തുന്നുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ഓരോ സ്റ്റുഡന്റിനും കർശനം പറഞ്ഞു തരും അങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് പെട്ടെന്ന് ഇമ്പ്രൂവ് ചെയ്യാം നമ്മൾ പഠിക്കുന്നതിനനുസരിച്ച് നമ്മളെ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ അഡ്വാൻസ് പ്രീ എക്സാം എന്നിങ്ങനെ ബാച്ചുകളാക്കി കോച്ചിങ് നൽകുന്നു ഒരു എക്സാമിന് വേണ്ടി മാത്രമല്ല അജിനോറയിൽ കോച്ചിങ് നൽകുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു ഓവറോൾ കോൺഫിഡൻസ് തന്നെ ഇമ്പ്രൂവ് ആകും എക്സാം ക്ലിയർ ചെയ്ത് പ്ലേസ്മെന്റ് അജിനോറിൽ നിന്ന് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എക്സാം ഫീസും ട്യൂഷൻ ഫീസും രണ്ടും റീഫണ്ട് കിട്ടും ഡൗൺലോഡ് അജിനോറ ലേണിംഗ് ആപ്പ് നൗ Ajinora get set fly Yes, good afternoon to all. My name is Vipin Wilson. I'm a language trainer working in the Zenora and with me. I'm Marilyn. I'm an OIT trainer. Yeah, today we will be conducting this live session for OIT speaking. And before going into that, let's welcome all the people who are coming in. Yes. As we have Fessy ma'am. Hi Fessy ma'am. Yes, Nido ma'am, welcome. Yes, Steffi K are welcome. Kavita, yep. welcome. Arun sir, welcome to the live. Silpa. Let's, let's wait for a few more people to join in. Then we can kick start. Yes, good afternoon. Arun sir. Uh, we are going to tell you at the very outset it's going to be beneficial before jumping into our life and uh, to the nucleus let's tell you okay let's uh, tell you that we have a uh, few good news to yes. share with you what is that ma'am first and foremost one is the results that published recently yeah. uh, you know the september 10 students uh, that result was published last tuesday and we are very proud to say that we have sent percentage results and we appreciate all the students and their oet trainers who won yeah. and uh, who have a great success yeah i would say oet trainers had uh, gave their said blood and tears when it was necessary yes. uh, to get this score uh, from our students and uh, we have as ma'am told we have sent percent 
റിസൾട്ട് ഇൻ ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം കോട്ടയം ബ്രാഞ്ച് ഈവൻ എറണാകുളം കോഴിക്കോട് so uh, we really want to congratulate all the students and the uh, trainers who took uh, the pain to get this success and the second okay so the second good news is that is from the part of ajinora we have brought out um, you know a reading guide a reading guide for oit students and we released it just few days back and it was it is a great success a uh, lot of uh, workouts for reading and uh, it will be it will be very handy for those who are buying it yeah, right yes okay. definitely you have seen that book ma'am Yes I have. So did so you go through I I go I went through and I found it so useful. Yes I also found that it's yeah. really, really useful and I we really suggest to buy that book. Yeah. So the next good news is that uh, we have a uh, next batch coming up on. Yes that's the next uh, thing we have to put forward. If you are willing or if you are planning to join OET don't hesitate come and to join us next monday our next batch will be starting on 3rd october right yeah, 3rd october yeah so please okay. do come and join us next monday we will start every batch every monday yeah that's that uh, especially i have to add on to that it's offline we do have branches in trivandrum kottayam uh, ernakulam kozhikode and different parts of kerala yes. so uh, you can do come and join any of our institutions and uh, we promise you success yeah and uh, towards the end i would like to tell you we have an app ajinora app it's available in play store and as well as in apple store so uh, just uh, download it it will become handy we do have free classes there we have demo classes over there we even speaking tests over yeah. there that will <coughs> become handy for you when you go for your examination i also recommend you to please do download that and uh, make use of uh, for your better future it's right. more convenient than you think so exactly. definitely go for it exactly so i think we have sufficient members and uh, let's begin yeah. uh, to the Today's. nucleus at the crux of our yeah. life so you must have seen the topic of uh, for our live it is like a 3 minutes strategy in oet speaking so uh, from the very outset when you heard this 3 minutes you must have understood uh, where we are basically i'm telling you we are going to take a live session on oet speaking and you know where 3 minutes come in right yes okay so let's um, tell them what's a table of content uh, for our live session yeah. first we will be saying certain basic ideas right yes okay so basic ideas like the timing of oet speaking and other things secondly what is it ma'am so secondly we will go go through the criteria of yeah. oet speaking uh, exactly thirdly that, we will have a small demo demo in the sense how exactly an oet speaking goes even with the introductory part usually nobody cares about the introductory part yeah. how to give an id etc mm -hmm. so we will be going through all that in detail and after that we, we will be give you some tips regarding the 3 minute strategy so exactly. most of the students don't know how to deal with that 3 minutes they'll be so much panicked anxious and they'll waste that time actually but we'll give you some tips regarding how to use that 3 minutes effectively exactly we do have in our bucket almost 6 tips it's yeah. going to be very beneficial for you following that we will give you explanation for the role play card and uh, towards the end we'll have a demo of a role play Yeah. that's how we are going to uh, continue with our life so first and foremost as we told we will see some ba basic things i am sure that all those who uh, are somehow connected with this oet or associated with oet they will know these things but uh, for a starting of Beginning. this live i am just uh, you know explaining it to that what is that first thing hmm. 
So first thing we have to say is that we have two role play card in the OT examination. Exactly. The basic thing is that we will have a ro two uh, role play cards for our examination and uh, yeah. each role play will uh, carry five minutes of presentation. Five minutes each. So a total 10 minutes. That's how it proceeds. And we will get three minutes for preparation okay. for each role play card. Yeah. So in total? Uh, we do have 20 minutes in total that's yes. how it so as ma'am told uh, we get three minutes preparation time that's what we are focusing on how to utilize this three minutes uh, how to move on or proceed what to do in this uh, during this three minutes so at the out at the very outset i am telling you it's all depends on how you spend these three minutes yeah. basing on that you are going to perform next coming five minutes your performance will be just based upon how you are going to prepare during this three minutes what do you yeah. think about yes i do agree that okay. it's very important to prepare ourselves during this three minute and be relaxed and be calm exactly ma'am you just uh, cleared your OET very recently uh, september 10th did you follow this strategy or uh, what was your experience about it? I was really struggling during my initial times and I don't know what to do with this three minutes. I yeah. try to understand why are they giving this three minutes. Mm. I was just rushing through all the background and mm -hmm. the task but I was not able to get the idea no. how to use this. But gradually my trainers helped me and now I'm able to do that. Yeah, do, I hope you heard what she said. She was even thinking uh, what to do with this three minutes. She even she said she was rushing, uh, you know, rushing towards the task that is given. So, oh, most majority of OET students are bothered about the bulleting points that is yeah, given over exactly. there. Just before that, there are certain things, background and, uh, you know, setting, setting etc. Yeah. So, those things are more important than the bulleting points that is given over there I would say that if yeah. you don't understand those things you are not going to understand the bulletin points which are given over there equal so, importance is yeah, necessary yes, it's equal importance is given to that so um, see uh, another basic thing is that how OET is being scored uh, what is uh, what is the criteria that they follow to give you a score see as we know there are two criteria yeah. uh, there are there which are they linguistic criteria and clinical communication criteria. exactly there are so many sub divisions for that we are not focusing on that part so we are not elaborating upon so these are the basic things and uh, we will be dealing with how to spend these three minutes so how to spend your three minutes basing on that you will be going to uh, perform in the coming five minutes as yeah. I told you at the beginning so I think uh, without much delay we can start the demo yes. right uh, yeah so we'll be starting the demo from the beginning okay very from the beginning how an examination is going to be exactly we will be saying and reading out everything so uh, you will not have a confusion when you go over there yeah. okay so this is how it is going to be in between i will be saying comments and uh, if there is something any doubts clarifications you are in need of please do comment i'll be reading through uh, once in a while okay cool so let's begin so ma'am, you are ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's start. So let's start the test. This is a recording for the occupational English test held in Azinora Institution, Scotchy. The candidate is Merlin Baby and the interlocutor is Vibin Wilson. Good afternoon, my name is Vibin Wilson. Can you say your name for the record, please? Yes, good morning, sir. My name is Merlin. Cool. And what is your candidate number? My candidate number is 231. Zero, zero, okay. four, six, five. Great. Thank you very much. Are you taking this test as a nurse? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I see your ID, please? Of course. Here you are. Thank you. So, please do note how she gave the ID card to me. Here you are. You can say all this. Uh, let it be like a conversation. Okay. And the other answers that you, she gave also is important. How she gave her candidate number. Very precise and very clear. Each number she have just, you know, uh, taken and said. Very crystal, uh, crystal clear to the interlocutor. That's how we must say it. Okay. So, after that, there is a confirmation. So, please confirm the details on the test paper, then read and sign the candidate declaration in front of your booklet. So, there will be a booklet and you have to sign uh, sign it on that. Yeah. So, you must be signing. Yeah. Okay, fine. 
Okay, you that's it. You can use it. the pencil or the pen. Either, yeah, either. either you can use pen or pencil. That's how it is. Okay. So there will be warm up questions followed by a uh, role play. So this is for a demo purpose. So we will have only one role play. Uh, from the perspective of examination, of course, you will have two role plays. Okay. Yeah. So remember, this is a test of English, not of your professional knowledge. And please speak naturally. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. So they do ask, do you have any questions? If you have any doubts or queries, you can ask them okay feel free to ask them okay fine so the warm-up questions are not assessed but it is a chance for us to get used to each other's voice fine okay. we'll just talk for two to three minutes can you just introduce yourself Merlin yes my name is Merlin I come from Manimala which is a small town in Kottam district okay I'm a nurse by profession mm. I graduated from INE SME CPAS Pudupalli and have six months of experience in emergency department of Rajiri hospital okay that's how we have to answer uh, introductory question can you introduce yourself when you ask that question everything was clear and uh, if you make a mistake here nobody is going to judge on you nobody is going to assess you for the English that you have said just now uh, and uh, over and above the interlocutor is not having any capacity to give you any mark or take away your mark that's right yeah, that's okay right. fine that's is that's why he or she is known as interlocutor a facilitator that's it okay fine let's move on with our role play so Thank you very much for sharing that. So let's move on to the role play now. I will take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you will take your professional role. The role play will last for about five minutes. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Cool. You have to three minutes. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I will let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything that you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Okay. Here is a pencil to make notes. Thanks. Okay. So this is how your speaking role play will be starting. Okay. So they will give so you here a, comes our three minutes time. Yeah, exactly. This is the place that we are concentrating on. Here we will be discussing with you how you should spend your three minutes. Okay. After completing all our tasks and uh, other tips and all that we want to say, we will continue with our role play and towards the end we will have a demo. So now we are in a stage that three minutes preparation is going on, right? So we will see how we can prepare these three minutes, yeah. right? Okay, fine. Now let's move on to the tips, right? Okay, we have uh, six uh, tips in our bucket and we will be sharing that with you. I am sure that this is going to be very handy for you, okay? So I would highly recommend all our students, please do have a pen and paper with you. Um, you can write down yeah. all those things and you can, you can go down. through this. So it will be really helpful for you. Exactly. You can jot down. It is going to be beneficial. We have six tips. If you go deep into it, it is going to be beneficial. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, fine. So, ma'am, what is our first tip that we have to give to our students? So, our first and foremost tip is ask the interlocutor how to address him or her. Okay. Uh, this is a common doubt. Should yeah. we ask or will they say all these questions do come from our students? Will they say that or should we ask? Uh, okay. Even the yeah. orientation by the Everybody first. Everybody will be yeah. hesitated. Hesitated. Uh, or um, uh, if at all I have to ask, uh, if name is given still I have to ask. All these questions uh, are asked by our students. We do rectify them. So, asking the interlocutor what to call him or her. Okay. So, once the role play is given and the role card is with you and you are reading through and you are perplexed. Uh, should I ask? No need. Or she will say. So, all these worries do come in. Okay. So, it is basing upon whether it is a known case or unknown case. Basing on that, you will have to ask the interlocutor, yeah. how shall I address you during the That's role the play? That's the exact thing. Exactly. We have to understand whether it's a known case or an unknown case. Yeah. And if it's a known case only, we will ask the question during the preparation time. Exactly. Ma'am, can you state some of the known cases? Of course. Known case include a hospital ward, yeah. which means the hospital, uh, the, the patient is already admitted in the hospital okay. ward. Then we have a home visit. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, we definitely have to ask okay. the question as okay. the 
name of the interlocutor to address them. Okay, what about uh, unknown case? Unknown case include community health center uh -huh. and then we have the outpatient clinic which is uh, commonly called as the OP. Yeah. And we have another case too uh, in which uh, we have a confusion regarding whether it's a okay. known or an unknown. Okay. That um, setting include the emergency department and uh, sometimes the school clinic too. Okay, fine. So in that case we are a little confused but the background of the patient information can definitely help us okay. in dealing with it that. It can fluctuate, that's what she was saying. The yeah. school clinic and home visit can fluctuate according to the situation. Yes. So when we come to tip number three, we will be elaborating upon that. Okay, fine. So that's the first tip for you is that asking the interlocutor what yeah. to call him or her. Yeah. It is always basing upon it, whether it is known case or unknown case, we have to ask what. what? How to address? How to address the yeah. interlocutor? So how can we ask that, sir? To so, there are different ways to ask them. I'll state just one of them. Um, excuse me. Uh, how shall I address you during this role play? Yeah. It's uh, one of the way. Do you yeah. know any other ways you can? How may I address you? How may I address you during the role play? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How shall I address you during the role play? Yeah. All these are different or varying ways to ask the interlocutor uh, about addressing them during the, you know, during the role play. So there are interlocutors, uh, they say that you can say, you can say uh, one name, what you like. They give uh, the student an option, uh, you can choose a name, okay. So make sure that uh, you must look at the gender of the patient and name them, uh, yeah. it's another, another thing, okay. Don't uh, make them uncomfortable yeah, with that. Correct, correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. So if the patient is a male, don't name them Jasmine, right. <laughs> so name them some um, male names yeah. like John, okay, Tom or whatever it is. Okay, fine. So here we come to the end of our uh, what we call the first tip, and let's move on to the second, second tip. One. Our second tip is that what is it, ma'am? Think about the setting. Think about the setting. If you look at a role play card, the first thing will, which will be written there is a setting. Yeah. So setting is having immense importance. So. Of course, you must look at the setting, then proceed with it. First and foremost, your eye must point on a setting, right? Yeah. You should not look anywhere else but just setting, okay? Why we say that? Because the setting will set the urgency and the tone that you have to speak, right? I think students never notice this because this is really small. Yeah. Like background and task are really big, but yeah. the setting is too small. But you definitely have to notice and think about the setting before moving on to background and the task. Exactly. So if you don't look at uh, the setting, you will not get uh, how to start the role play because that determines or that tells you how to proceed, how your tone must be, how urgent is this patient. So. All these things will be told by our setting, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, the setting will set the tone and uh, how to proceed with it. So, it's so important to look at the setting and continue with it. Uh, so that's our second tip. We will summarize it, the first one and two. The first tip that they gave, uh, what you, we gave was... Ask the interlocutor how to address him or her okay, the and second the second thing tip was, is think about the setting. Okay, read through the setting, always have this setting back of your mind. When you read through the background, when you go through the bulletin point, always you must have this setting uh, you know, on your head, it must be there, it must be there, then you can plan accordingly. That's our second tip and we will move on with our third tip. What is our third tip? Understand the scenario. Okay, understanding the background or understanding the scenario. So, so if you read through the background which is given there, you will understand each word given there is having in-depth meaning. Yeah. Okay, each word will have very, very significant meaning. So, I would highly urge all the students who are watching this live and you can tell your friends as well, please, please, please go through each word, glance through each word because each word will have a depth 
depth meaning in depth meaning you may be going and you may see 57 you may assume that it is his or her age but it can be given a kg his weight yeah. right it can be the patient's weight so you there is a lot of chance of chance for you to get misguided or misled so each word is important so and after also that. sometimes um, there might be two pers persons in yeah. the role play like yeah. in the background it may be uh, we are it might be mentioned that yeah. we are speaking to the bystander yeah. or if a mother and child be there we, we have to speak to the mother yeah. so we can understand uh, whom to speak like exactly. to whom we have to speak okay so that will that information will be taken from the background okay that information is in background so when you said that I was remembering I was teaching there and uh, one student her English is awesome awesome I love her English she came to me and I was taking speaking test she came presented it so well <laughs> but the thing was that she is supposed to talk to the bystander, but she was always talking to me just like as I am the patient. Okay. So, so it is completely disqualified, right? Yeah. So her English is awesome. I am telling you, her English was awesome, but we cannot give them, you know, any marks. Yeah. So I said, I told her that, just glance through the background once again. That's the experience that I had. So from the experience we learned from my experience i am telling you please please go through the background n number of information is given over there and yeah? glance through each word each word given in the background okay fine so i think that's it and i think we can move on with the fourth tip before that we will summarize it once again so tip number one was um you know ask the interlocutor <coughs> how to address him or her and the tip number two was think about the setting okay think about the setting or glance at the setting at very outset once you get the role play card glance at the setting, setting. And okay the and the third, third one was one is understand the scenario yeah understanding the scenario because n number of informations are given there so please do please do read very very carefully to the background information this background information will give you who where and what right who yeah. where and what who the patient is where the patient is and uh, when the patient is so all these things will be uh, given in the where in the background and setting or scenario uh, yeah. and sometimes you can see that the role play will be beginning from uh, like in the middle of the uh, section exactly. like we have to uh, sometimes it's given that you have just examined the wound exactly. or you have just examined the child then, you, then we don't need an introduction exactly. right exactly we have we to don't need an introduction especially we see in a, uh, the sitting of a home setting right yeah uh, thank you for allowing me to examine your, your wound, wound. Yeah. Okay. so that tells you we are starting the conversation from the middle okay fine yeah so that's all about the third tip i think yeah okay fine so let's continue with it uh, we have reached up to our third tip and let's move on to the fourth tip ma'am can you just read it what is the fourth tip that yeah. we have read the task and focus on the verbs yeah so sir could you please explain what is a verb okay uh, speaking from the perspective of english what is a verb it's a common question and we we must have learned from our childhood what yeah. is a verb what is used to describe you know an action or a state of occurrence that's how we put it in a good sentence okay, okay? so it tells you what the action is a verb denotes an action okay, right okay. okay so that's a verb is when you get the role play card in the bulleting points you will see certain words which are considered to be verb if you can notice or if you can figure out these verbs i would say 30 percentage of your role play is done yeah you know exactly. why because this you know these verbs tells you how to proceed this verb will tell you how, how to, to go forward yeah, how to fulfill the task exactly. that remains in this verb uh, yeah uh, that verb tells you what to say what to ask right how to begin exactly mm. so can you state some of the examples of uh, these verbs that we see Com or uh, uh, yeah rather we commonly we can see some verbs like uh, uh, reinforce yeah. uh, then confirm yeah find out yeah reassure yeah, yeah. So those are some common verbs you emphasize all play cards. Yeah. emphasize yeah all these words are commonly seen so these verbs will always tell you what to do uh, for that i would suggest you an uh, you know an exercise if you just uh, google it you will find n number of uh, you know sentences okay just sentences just take out those sentences 
lenses and try to figure out what is a verb in that. I'm telling you, OET students, if you can do this exercise, when you get a role play card, easily you can figure out what is a verb in a sentence, yeah. right? So uh, I'm not asking you to go in depth into the grammar and learn all that. No, no, no. I'm just asking you just get some sentences and just by yourself figure it out what the verb is in that for OET speaking that is going to be very beneficial for you. Uh, for example, I am asking you, he apologized to the teachers, ma'am can you just tell me which is a verb in that? He apologized to the teachers. Yeah. Apologize. Uh, yeah, apologized. Apologized is action, right? Apologized. He apologized is action. So, that's how things are. Oh, another uh, from the uh, perspective of OET, he will be discharged today. Discharged. Yeah, discharged. That's action. He will be discharged. So, that's all. when you hear a sentence, try to call out what is the verb and that, that is going to be beneficial, right? Yeah. Okay. So, let's add upon some tips here. So, there will be words like, um, you know, find out, as we told, find out, explain, emphasize, reassure, advise, all these things are there. So, when you see a word like um, find out, yeah. if you hear, see a word in the first bulleting point, find out. So, how will you start the conversation? Find out means we have to find something, right? Yeah, exactly. So, we can say with politeness that could you please tell me yeah. how often it occurs yeah. or uh, could you please tell me regarding the other any other symptoms. Exactly. Like that we can, could you please? Could you please? Or would you please? Could you tell me how often do you get this neck pain? Yeah. Okay. You can start. If you see this word, find out, you can always proceed with this. Okay, right. This is one of the ways you can figure out a number of ways for this. But we are just telling you one of the ways you can start. If you see a verb like find out in the one of the bulleting points, you can just uh, uh, start your conversation this. Could you tell me how often you? That's where I told you at the beginning, just have a paper and pen with you. Just, just draw down. It will be beneficial. I'm going to just tell you few words, few verbs that will be starting on the starting of the bulleting point. These are some uh, common words you can see in an OET role play card. So, please write down and see how you can begin the task. Yeah, correct. Okay, fine. Find so, out we have already told. Fine. Uh, so, next word usually we see is explain. Yeah, that's a very common word. Explain. So, if you see a word like explain to the patient or how will you start, okay? Let me tell you a bit more about, okay? We are explaining something to the patient. Patient is ignorant about, so we are just elaborating upon. We are elaborating and telling. Let me tell you a bit more about, okay? Yeah. Fine. Another word usually that we see is what? We can see empathize. Empathize. Empathize means we have to bring that empathize empathy in our voice, right? Yeah, like our examiner is hearing our voice, yeah. not our face. So, exactly. we have to bring out that uh, voice, that empathizing voice in our speaking and yeah. we can begin it as it's understandable or I can understand your situation. Okay, fine. So, that's how we begin that. When she said that another point came to my mind is, uh, you know, two examiners are assessing your speaking test. You will have two role plays and uh, not one examiner is assessing that. Your one role play will be analyzed by another individual and the second one will be analyzed by another individual. So, they are putting it or clubbing it together and you get a score like 350, yeah. 340, okay, 360, 410. So, that is how it is. So, the only relation between you and your examiner is that the audio which is being recorded. So, all that you could juggle with is, you know, your voice when you are sympathizing, bringing down your voice or when you are, you know, uh, saying something um, strong from the perspective of medical science, your voice must be bold and solid, yeah. okay. Yeah. For example, if you say. If you are advising something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for example, if you say, uh, before traveling to Cambodia, you are expected to take um, vaccine for hepatitis A and B. Right? Yeah. This is a sentence and a solid sentence from the perspective of medical science. That must be very solid. So, when the patient is saying, my father passed away last, last week, that is why I have all this. When you, when patient is saying, you must bring down your voice, you must bring down and you must say, I am so sorry to hear that. Uh, um, I feel for you. So, bring down your voice, empathy, empathy. Okay, that is how it must be. Okay, fine. So, another verb we commonly that we see is, <coughs> Okay, oh, it's sorry, it's okay. So, another word that we see is a reassure, a reassurance that we give to our patients, okay. 
I can assure you it is very common procedure. I can assure you it is a very common procedure. Just, you know, you know, re reassuring the patient. That's, that's how you can begin the sentence. I hope you are getting it. I hope you are getting it. What I was saying is if you see a word like reassure, if you see a word like reassure in your bulletin points or when the bulletin point is starting, you can, of course, you can start by you can start your conversation like this. I can assure you, it is a very common procedure that we are seeing every day in our hospital. Yeah. So it's a cakewalk, you can say. Right. Okay. Fine. So please don't use any idioms, but I'm just saying it. Right. Okay. So another word is advice. Um, we can. Uh, it's also a common word you can see in the role play card. Yeah. There we can. You can begin it as it's a good idea uh, to. It's a good idea to do that or it's a good idea to um, begin the exercise today. So that's an advice but we have to make it a little sweet because yeah. nobody likes advice, right? Yeah, exactly, so exactly. Nobody likes advice. Try to make advices. it a little more sweet by saying it's a good idea mm. to begin the exercise today. Yeah, correct. That's fine. Okay. Another thing that we see is encourage. Uh, encourage the patient. So, for example, for instance, let's take a patient is uh, in your hospital. Um, he or she had a hip replacement surgery. So, we must advise them to move around a bit uh, to get back to their normal state. Right? So, we must say, do you think you could try? Do you think you could try walking or moving a bit that will help you to come back to your normality right yeah so that's how we start if you see a word like encourage you can say do you think you could try do you think you could try this so first to give the advice then towards the end you can add this do you think you could try this I hope you can do this okay you can yeah. add that okay fine and uh, the second last word usually that we see is persuade persuade so persuade I think uh, most of the students doesn't know the meaning yeah. of persuade persuade means just to um, make someone do something that doesn't that the person doesn't like sometimes it's hard to accept some uh, some others advices yeah. so we have to make them more convenient to do that isn't okay, it fine, exactly. so we can present it as I know it's hard but you really need to make some changes or it would be beneficial if you could do that or it would be appreciated if you could do that so we have to understand their perspective too so we can begin it as i know it's hard but uh, it would be beneficial if you could do this okay isn't it? that's how it is and the last word that we have is reinforce reinforce this is a common word that we see in our role play or in the bulletin points okay reinforce how to reinforce okay if you see a word like reinforce you can of course say i know it might seem difficult but it is essential that you do so patient may be very reluctant to do it but it is so hard for the patient but you are still reinforcing to the patient please do it yeah. please do it that's how if you put it in very common words you have to do it that's what we have to say but, but we, we cannot say, say it. Yeah. yeah this is what you have to in reinforcement that this is what we have to say in common terms we have to do is you have to do that that's how we say it. you should but do that yeah. We cannot <laughs> say, that. say that. You should not say, you should do. We, we, we are not expected to do that. Okay. But instead of that, you can say, I know it might be seem difficult, but it is essential that you do this. Okay. Yeah, Very polite, but you conveyed the idea. That's how it must be. I think in reinforcing, we have to highlight the importance and make the uh, individual to do that. Highlighting the importance and making them to do that. Okay, fine. That's how it is. So, let's summarize it. These are the points. We have uh, read out all that. Find out, explain, empathize, reassure, advise, encourage, reinforcement. So, everything we have done that. Let's summarize it. We have so we said… So, we have dealt with the four tips. Yeah. And first mm -hmm. tip was? Asking the interlocutor what to call him or her. Are we told it's basing upon uh, what non-case or unknown-case. Basing on that, we have to ask them. And the second tip was think about the setting. We have to first of all go to the setting and understand what is the setting and where the patient is. Okay. And the third tip is? Third tip is understanding the scenario. Yeah. Okay, the scenario scenario is so important, the background of the patient, uh, he or she must have come to the hospital previously, this may be a second check, a checkup, so all these cases are there, so you must uh, read each and every word which is given over there, that was a third tip, going and glancing 
uh, very keenly to the background okay Thank and the fourth tip time. was read the task and understand the verbs and here i think you can underline the verbs right yeah exactly we forgot to tell that point if you can underline these verbs i told you an exercise you follow that and if you can underline the verb because you get a pencil as well when you go for the examination so please do underline the verb and the important points uh in the third tip that we are the scenario the background like, uh, when you are you are speaking you might be anxious and you get panic then you can definitely go to the underlined words yeah. and you can notice what to do the next you need not read the whole sentence to understand what it is just a glance at what you have underlined you will get the whole idea yeah, right you can okay. underline this words and the keywords yeah. that's enough that's enough okay here we have the second last tip that is tip number 5 it is like anticipate how the patient might be feeling what do you yeah. want to tell about So it's very important to anticipate what the patient might be feeling. Okay. So um, <clears throat> in some cases, you can see that uh, there will there will be a task called mm -hmm. highlight the importance of exercise. So we might be thinking that okay, we have to explain the importance. But uh, yes, you have to think that. But at the same time, you have to, you have to anticipate. So if we want to highlight the importance of exercise, the patient might be resisting it. So uh, as Sal already mentioned an example of a hip replacement surgery so a patient who had an hip replacement surgery won't be willing to move around yeah exactly so they will be uh, resisting to move around and do exercises yeah. so in that case we have to highlight and elaborate the importance of exercises okay. so when we see some points like highlight reassure and another, another one is reassure reassure So okay. if we see a reassure point we have to anticipate that the patient need little more uh, clarification and uh, the patient is not satisfied yeah. with the explanation right now we have to explain it little more and make them more comfortable correct yeah. so all that ma'am ma was trying to convey is that you must be anticipate or foresee what the patient must uh, feel like or yeah. they might feel like so uh, as she told a uh, hip replacement surgery so he or she will be 100% uh not willing to move around they will not move around because they will have pain and yeah, they will so have yeah. all the difficulty they will be so resisting you must be anticipate when you read <coughs> during this 3 minutes you must be able to anticipate that feeling of that patient of course you cannot see the you know a role play card of the interlocutor what is in that but you must be able to anticipate and figure out of course they will resist me because they cannot move around of course they will say that no it's not possible for me they will say that you must be able to anticipate for another example in the task it <coughs> is given reassure the patient if it is given reassure the patient uh, you can assure that the patient is anxious why should we reassure sir and things because they are not comfortable with they are not sure about satisfied. so they are not satisfied with so we have to reassure to the patient so they must be anxious <coughs> so you must be able to <coughs> see the anxious part of it before that's a fifth tip certain things you must be able to grasp when you read at, in this 3 minutes okay mm. fine okay so let's move on to the last tip i think last tip Here yeah. we have the last tip. What is it, ma'am? Avoid medical jargon. Yeah, avoid medical jargon. So certain jargons will be there in your role play. Um, jargons in the sense medical terms, medical words. See, everybody is not from medical background. No, everybody is not medical. So they may not understand certain uh, terms or terminologies or medical terms that are in your role play, right? Yeah. What do you think about? yeah common people common people understand. may not understand that so for example if you see in your role play myocardial infection so as a common man i will not understand what it is so as a medical representative how will you uh, de-jargonize this word we can either say it as a heart attack yeah. or a cardiac arrest exactly heart attack as a medical representative uh, when you read your role play you will see myocardial infection <coughs> so i will not understand that uh, i am not from medical background i will not understand that so as a common uh, common people as they are not understanding you must de-jargonize it this is a jargonized word uh, yeah, only medicals will understand that so you must de-jargonize it and tell them this is heart attack okay, yeah. okay right so another word is uh, you see abbreviations in your copd 
COPD is a common term that we, we used to see. So, basically COPD is chronic obstru obstructive pulmonary disease. Yeah. But we can simply say to the patient that uh, see you your lungs have been blocked and your airflow is blocked. So you'll have some difficulty breathing. So yeah. that's, that's a simplified way of saying it. We yeah. cannot say to the patient, you have a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, right? They will not understand. Yeah, they will not understand. Okay. At the same time, they will get panicked too. So we have to explain everything simply, simply and in simplified words. Okay, fine. So let's look upon some, you know, comments that is given over there. Nice explanation. Thank you. Thank you for your compliment. Love it. And uh, informative session. Thank you, Fasima. Okay, yes, okay, I think no much doubts are being asked. Okay, fine, it's good. Okay, I think we can proceed with it. Yeah. So, another word is uh, inflammatory. <coughs> inflammatory is a word usually we see in our role play, inflammation. He or she had inflammation. So, as a common man, uh, when we go and explain you had inflammation, they will not understand what it is. How will you simplify this word, inflammation? We can say your legs are swollen or it's swelling. It's swelling. People will understand that. So that's how we de-jargonize it. Okay, and um, uh, hyperlipidemia. That's uh, high cholesterol level. Yeah, high cholesterol level. So all these medical words will not be understood by a common man. So this is how the you de-jargonize it. So during these three minutes preparation time, you are expected to de-jargonize this word and keep it. So. You can present it when you present it the next coming five minutes. That's how it must be. Okay. I hope things are clear. Anything else to be added, ma'am? No. No, perfectly fine. So let's summarize it once again, all the tips that we have given today. <laughs> so if you follow all these six steps, I hope you can prepare or you can utilize these three minutes perfectly. What do you think about? Yes. So okay. please do follow the steps yeah. and crack your OET. Yeah. So the first tip was, um, you know, asking the interlocutor how to call them, how to address them during the role play. The second one was... Uh, Think about the setting. And the third one was looking at the scenario. And the fourth one was read the task and focus on the verbs. Yeah, focusing on verbs. That was the fourth one. And we have given uh, certain words that were there. Find out, explain, empathize, reassure, advise, uh, uh, reinforce. And we also gave how to start the sentence. If you see all these verbs over there. And the fifth tip was anticipate certain things that uh, certain feelings that the patient will have. Feel, okay, yeah. if you can anticipate certain things things uh, it will you know bring down your burden during the examination or when you are presenting it coming five minutes okay the sixth tip was and the last tip was avoid medical jargon okay avoiding medical jargon okay uh, see how to de-jargonize it this word jargon is not common to all yeah so de-jargonization what does it mean simplifying it that's the meaning of it that's how we de-jargonize it right yeah, yeah. okay fine i hope uh, this is how we prepare three minutes and um, yeah let's move on to the role play now i will explain to you how a role play is a role play can be displayed okay the technical team can you just uh, display display the role play on the screen for our students Okay, this is a setting of a patient. So, this is a setting uh, given there is hospital outpatient clinic. Okay, uh, hospital outpatient clinic and this is the task of the interlocutor, the patient's part. Okay, uh, you are 52 years old and being given information about uh, transesophageal echocardiogram. Uh, exactly what does it mean? Uh, ultrasound of the heart using a small camera going down to the throat. You are going to uh, undergo this particular test next week. That's how the text says. Or first, as we told in the tips, we went through the setting. Second thing was we went through the, you know, the background of the patient or how the patient is. Uh, he is uh, 52. We have gone through that and what is his condition also, what test he or she he had to undergo. That one also we, we underwent, okay. And uh, towards the end, uh, towards the end uh, we will go through the task. The task tells you 
when asked say you have never had echocardiogram before and you are feeling quite nervous this is a task of the interlocutor so certain things are important in echocardiogram feeling quite nervous these two things are so important okay and the second bulleting point is that ask if there is anything you should do before you have your examination so as interlocutor as a patient i will ask the nurse that as a patient is it necessary that i must do something from my part okay that's what we ask in the second uh, second bulleting point and the third one is say you hope you will feel okay afterwards as you have planned to go out with friends okay so that's i am planning to go out along with my friends once the test is done i am asking this nurse this medical representative is it okay for me to go out okay and the fourth bulleting point is when asked to say that you have arranged a friend to come with you and she will stay with you afterwards as well okay so i have arranged a friend to stay with me once the test is done and afterwards also and i have one more concern say you don't want to have uh, you don't want to wait too long for the result i don't want to wait for the result once um, you know the test is done i don't want to wait long that's what the fourth bulleting point of the interlocutor says and the last bulleting point says say the information say the information is clear <coughs> i'm telling the nurse your information is clear to me but you will i will be glad that once the procedure is over all the information nurse has given to me is satisfactory it is good but i don't want to uh, you know still i am a bit worried uh, once the procedure is over i will be completely fine that's what the task of the interlocutor or the patient is say now the nurse's task now the nurse's task will be coming so she will be explaining merlin will be explaining that yeah in the nurse's uh, card also we will be having a setting yeah and we'll have a background and some task so the setting as sir uh, already mentioned it's a hospital outpatient clinic and the background is you are giving a 52 year old patient information about transesophageal echocardiogram or toe he or she is going to have next week so um, so when we were discussing about the preparation time we already mentioned that each and every word in this background is important so from the background we can understand that this patient has has been scheduled for a procedure called transesophageal echocardiogram next week so from that itself we have we can understand that it's a known case and we can ask for the question i mean ask uh, the pa the name of the patient and the first task is confirm the patient is scheduled to have a transesophageal echocardiogram find out if the patient has had one before so in this task we have two parts first one is to confirm the patient is scheduled to have a have that procedure and following that we have to ask for uh, any similar experience in the past so that's all about the first task second task is explain the function of transesophageal echocardiogram explain so we have to explain the uh, what what this really this procedure is and why we uh, we are uh, doing this procedure so we have to explain everything in detail using the points in the bracket which include provide detailed images check structure of heart analyze blood flow enable planning of surgery or treatment so the third point is outline pre toe requirements avoid food or drink 6 hours before describe preparation at the hospital so in the third point uh, we have to um, explain regarding the pre requirements and the preparation at the hospital and the third last point is advise patient about the after effects so uh, we have to not only really explain regarding the pre preparations we have to also explain regarding the after effects to prepare the patient for that too and the se uh, second last point is find out if the patient has someone to support him or her post discharge so we have to make sure somebody accompanies the patient and the last task is give information about results so uh, we have to tell the patient regarding the results and probably one to two weeks will be taken and about the follow up appointment by the G with the gp so that's all about the nurses task and the card okay that's it uh, we have seen what the card what's a, from the perspective of the interlocutor we saw it from the perspective of a nurse also we saw it now let's see the let's come to the last part of it let's see a demo uh, how we can do this uh, this particular role play okay Malin, shall we start yeah okay fine 
So, um, speaking from the perspective of exam again, so <coughs> we can say um, the interlocutor will tell you, uh, you can look at the card during the test, but you must return to me at the end of the test. The role play will last now about five minutes. Don't worry if you if I stop you when the five minutes are up. Okay. Can you start the role play, please? Yes. Okay. <coughs> good afternoon. Very good afternoon to you. Please be seated. Thank you. You're welcome. I am Merlin. I am one of the registered nurses working in this hospital outpatient clinic. Okay. For my confirmation purpose, could you please tell me your name? My name is Vibin Wilson. You can address me with my first name, Vibin. Okay, Vibin. I am aware that you have been scheduled for the transesophageal echocardiogram next week. Am I right? You are right. Okay. So, could you please tell me, have you ever had this procedure before? For your kind information, I have never heard this name even. I was a okay. bit worried when I say uh, heard this name. I don't know what it is. Vibin, I can understand that the name itself can cause some anxiety in you. Yeah. But do not worry. I can explain everything in detail. Yeah. And after that, if you have any doubts, please feel free to ask me. Sure. Okay. So, can I explain? Yeah, why not? Go for it. Okay. This transesophageal echocardiogram or TOE is a procedure which gives detailed images mm. and we can check the structure of your heart too. Okay. At the same time, we can analyze the blood flow and moreover we can plan the future treatment okay. which includes a surgery or we can manage it with medications. Okay, fine. So, to plan the future treatment, we are doing this procedure. Okay. Is that clear to you? Oh, that's quite clear to me. So, from the perspective of a patient, I am asking you, is there something that I can do for this procedure? Vibin, that's a very relevant question. Yes, you have to be prepared um, and it's important to fast at least six hours before the procedure. Mm -hmm. And once you come to the hospital, we will be giving you mm -hmm. an aesthetic spray and a light sedation okay. to make sure you don't feel any pain during the procedure. Okay. Along with that, we will give you a mouth guard to secure your mouth. Okay. Is that okay for you? That sounds good and thank you for that. Okay. Do you have any other doubts? Um, my doubt is that I am planning to, uh, soon after this procedure is done, I am planning to go for a long drive. I am going along out along with my friends. Mm -hmm. So, is there any problem with that? Webin, I do understand your concern, but um, if I speak from my medical perspective, I'll ask you to shift or cancel your plans mm. because you'll be having some mild discomfort and mm. drowsiness and soreness after this procedure. Okay. So it's better to take rest. Okay. So are you willing to do that? If, uh, if you are saying that, I can postpone it uh, for another day. Vibin, I really appreciate your initiativeness and willingness. Okay. And also, I have to add that uh, after this procedure, we will be observing you. Mm. And it's essential to uh, avoid driving for the first 24 hours. And it will be good if somebody accompanies you. Yeah. Is there somebody to accompany you? Yeah, there is uh, one of my friends. I have already arranged her. She will be accompanying me. Okay, that's great, Vibin. Yeah. Do you have any other concerns? At present, uh, I don't have any other concerns, uh, but um, I don't want to wait too long for the results. Can you make sufficient arrangements for that? I, I do acknowledge your concern, um, but it will the results will probably take one to two weeks mm -hmm. and the results will be directly sent to the general practitioner. Okay. So, you can go uh, meet him for the results okay. and the follow-up appointment will be scheduled in two weeks. Okay. So, I hope it's fine. Yeah, all that you have explained so far is completely clear to me, but uh, I'm a little more, you know, I'm a bit anxious. Uh, once the procedure is done, I hope I'll be fine. Vibin, nothing to be worried about. Everything will be fine and we will be here to help you. Okay. And in uh, next, if you have any other doubts yeah. regarding this procedure, okay. you can contact us anytime. So, we will meet you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is how a uh, role play is done and uh, towards the end the interlocutor will say, here we come to the end of our role play. After returning the role play, the role play card, you may take a leave and don't forget to take your ID with you. So, this is how an OET role play is done. So, if we analyze how she took the role play card, there was a huge word in our role play card. What was that? Transesophageal echocardiogram exactly as a common man i am not understanding that she dejagonized it 
she told in detail how it is and yeah. what it is so that's how you must do so i'm a bit anxious she anticipated that she told me do not be worried about she was sure that uh, i'm a bit worried about okay so that's how you use all the tips that we have told and we are coming to the, almost the end of our live session before winding up let's uh, remind you let's uh, remind you that uh, you know certain things like uh, we have published our results on september 10th yeah. uh, the september 10th oet results were published and we have got a 10% result and uh, ajnora has published a book for oet reading uh, so it is becoming handy for all so please to buy one so the new batch for online offline so we if have you are planning to join oet Come and join us next week. Yeah, exactly. We have branches in Trivandrum. We have uh, branches in Trivandrum, Kochi, Kotem, and Koriko. Yeah. So please do come and join. So you will not regret our. We provide one of the best education system in uh, in Kerala. Okay, for IIT. Fine. Okay. So I hope uh, things are quite clear and nothing else to be said. If there is anything, let's go through some. Okay, let's, uh, anything else to be dealt with? So, I don't think there are uh, much things to be dealt with. I think, uh, we think the tips are all clear yeah, to you Yeah, almost all. all the tips are clear. But towards the end, I would like to tell you, so if you can watch a certain videos, uh, even in our YouTube channel, there are a lot of OET speaking videos are available. Please do glance through, please do go through how, how the, you know, they present it, what are the words that they use. Uh, you know how they you know how they modulate their voice all these things are important and you can mm, go through that please do watch uh, more OET speaking test videos and you can okay. write down certain phrases from yeah. those uh, videos which exactly. should be useful for you yeah. and you can apply that in your speaking okay and uh, not only really writing down these phrases please use it regularly yeah. on a regular basis please do use these phrases when you just uh, sit there for OET speaking automatically things will come out yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, I think these are the tips that we yeah. have to share with you. Nothing else. So, stay tuned. Uh, we are winding up here, winding up, uh, signing off uh, Vipin Wilson and with me, Merlin. Thank you. Thank you. What is IELTS and OET coaching? One of the most important things is that you have to do with your own life. That's why you have to do that. Ajinora trainers are all the same. ചെയ്ത് പ്ലേസ്മെന്റ് അജനോറിൽ നിന്ന് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എക്സാം ഫീസും ട്യൂഷൻ ഫീസും രണ്ടും റീഫണ്